Hey guys, Joshua Odoon here. I'm standing in front of my personal home just outside of Portland, Oregon. My wife and I bought this house a couple years ago and our plan is to renovate it over the next five years. So far we've painted the exterior and we've remodeled the master bath. I'm looking forward to the opportunity today to walk you guys through the master bathroom. Come along, take a look. We're here in the master bathroom space. Uh, the space was originally built in 1984 and when we bought the house it was pretty much all original. When you first walked in there was a taupe bathtub right here. Next to that was a full height white uh, oak built in for linens. Next to that was the shower enclosure which was in this corner and then in this corner was the toilet. Uh, the vanity remains roughly where it was before. It's changed a little bit in size. Uh, the first thing that I did to get this project started was to go through the design process. I hired a local friend by the name of Joel Fraley and Co. Uh, we came up with some floor plan options and ultimately landed on this one. I felt like it uh, flowed better than the original floor plan and it allowed for us to make each element of the bathroom pop and uh, take advantage of the natural light in the space. The first element in the bathroom that I want to talk to you guys about is this custom vanity. Um, I really wanted to capture the natural light in the space and uh, the skylight is really the only option we have. So I wanted to center the vanity over the skylight to allow that natural light to hit it and to play off of it. Um, I had the concept for the vanity. Um, I knew I wanted a, a walnut vanity and I knew the dimensions and I knew the layout for the drawers. Um, I hired a local cabinet maker by the name of Joe Thiel with Boundary Fog Furniture and uh, him and I came out came up with the grain pattern and the detail just continues to go farther and farther. Uh, the drawer boxes are made out of maple and they are mitered and dovetailed. Uh, all the hardware is soft close. We came up with these handmade poles that mimic the shape of the glass mosaic uh, in the tile work, which I'll show you shortly. For the countertop, I ended up picking Carrera marble. It's one of my favorite marbles, um, and it also really ties into the color palette that I was going for in here. It has the white marble, which accents the shower pan and it also has gray tones in it that ties it in with the field tile. So I really wanted to bring the white shower pan and the walls together and I felt like the Carrera marble really tied the two together. So it acts as a bit of a transition between light to dark. I had a couple of approaches when it came to the shower. I wanted the function to be spot on and I also wanted the form to be something that showcased my, my tile setting skills and my my years in the business. I had two trains of thought with the shower. One was the function and the other was the form. Uh, starting here at the shower pan, I decided to go with a directionally sloped pan to a linear drain. You'll see that it fits left to right and front to back without any pieces around it. So it fits in the space perfectly. Uh, that wasn't very easy to pull off, but I made it just so in this particular case. Looking at the tile layout, it starts with a full tile here and it rolls over to the corner and we did a wrap in the corner which also makes up a full tile and that layout continues to the outside corner and folds to make up a full tile so from right to left the tile field is all full tiles. Looking at the glass mosaic you'll notice that it fits into the field tile so the field tile is full to full, top to bottom, and full to full, left to right. The challenge that I had with the mosaic lining up with the field tile was the difference in thickness of material. So the field tile was about a half inch thick, the mosaic was about an eighth inch thick. So I set the field tile first and I built out the substrate and set the glass mosaic so that it was flat with the wall tile. Commonly shower controls are located underneath the shower head. Uh, from a plumbing standpoint it's a little easier to plumb that way. It's just a direct shot to the shower head. 
in this case and often on my projects, I like to locate the mixing valve and shower controls at the entrance of the shower. This allows you to turn the water on and not have the water hit you while it's still cold. One of the main focal points of this shower is the niche and I really wanted it to tie seamlessly into the tile layout. So if you look closely, you'll see there's no small tiles bordering it. It's bordered by all full tile. Uh, I also wanted to tie the design elements together in the niche. So we have a piece of countertop slab making up the shelf, as well as using that glass mosaic in the back of the niche. I also did miters on all the corners. And as you can tell, they're all chip free, uh, very seamless very clean and uh, very detailed. If you guys are interested in more detail on the shower niche, you can reference my article in Fine Home Building, issue number 279. Above the tub, we did this nice linear niche. I wanted to, again, tie the design elements together with the glass mosaic and the Carrera marble. I decided to go so long with the niche because I want you to have access from both sides of the tub. So if you want to sit over there, you've got usage of the niche. If you sit over here, you've got usage of the niche. The other cool detail that we added to this tub is this waterproof tape light. And the tape light casts up and onto the plumbing fixture, which illuminates it. And it also casts light on the tile base that I wanted to bring some focus on. The last detail I have to finish in this bathroom uh, is the entry bench. My original intention was to create extra storage, uh, but I'd like to get a multi-purpose out of it. So we are going to do a leather top with a pad on it, uh, make it nice and comfortable. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Until next time.